Pulling a bushing or a bearing, like a clutch pilot bearing from a blind hole can be tricky. Today I'm going to show you the tool that I use to make that job a snap. Plus, I've got a cool tech tip that I bet you've never seen before. Stick with me, all of that is next. This is the Pittsburgh Automotive Slide Hammer and Bearing Puller Set, part number 62601 from Harbor Freight. I've owned this set for a number of years, but I'll be honest, it didn't get much action in the beginning. Most cars these days don't even offer a manual transmission as an option, so this gathered a lot of dust just sitting on the shelf. That is until one day I wanted to remove a stubborn part without damaging it. More about that in a minute. First, let's have a look at this tool. I'll point out some of its features, show you how it operates, then I'll score it revealing whether I think it's worthy of a tool demo's buy recommendation. Let's get started. This set comes well packaged in a blow molded storage case with two latches. The case is well made, it's fairly sturdy and not too bulky. Inside the adapters and the slide hammer have deep pockets to sit in, which means when I carry this around, throw it on the shelf or on the workbench, all of its components stay put. They aren't crashing around only to end up in a pile at the bottom corner of the box, so that's a real plus. Inside the kit, we find a small slide hammer and an assortment of expanding collet attachments. The slide hammer is made of knurled steel and is chrome plated. This part weighs only two pounds, which is all I need to know that this is not for heavy duty applications. The handle is also chrome plated and measures 15 inches long from end to end. On the end is not the industry standard 5 8 inch fine thread. Instead, it uses an M12 fine thread so that the collets will only fit this tool. Okay, time out. I'll get to the four collets in a minute, but first I think I should address the elephant in the chat room, or in this case, video. A lot of them. I guess there are at least 100 videos on YouTube showing you how to remove a pilot bearing using bread. If you haven't seen this trick yet, Matt from Bleep and Jeep has posted a video showing how he did it. Here's a short segment, check it out. All right. I saw this on the internet somewhere. We're gonna give it a shot. We need to get this pilot bearing out. And I don't have any kind of puller. All right, so tell them what you're gonna do and ask them if they think it's gonna work. <laughs> I mean, like, I understand the concept, and I think so, I hope it works. So what you're supposed to do is you find something that goes in the hole that fits tight, and then you stick a bunch of bread in the hole, and, uh, and then you shut, just keep shoving it in there until it pops this sucker out. So is it going to work or what? What Can do you guys you create think? create a yeast infection? <laughs> <laughs> I need a real oh, hammer. Right. I'll be right back. Okay. Now I can't see. Oh! Oh, it's working! <laughs> For applications with heavy corrosion or some other reason why the pilot bearing would be difficult to remove, there are a few problems with this method. First, if this method fails, you just end up with a mess and probably a pilot bearing that gets torn apart. Second, if the drift hits bottom, that's the crankshaft you're hammering on. And that breaks one of my personal rules. Never hammer on a crankshaft. The crank is held in place longitudinally with thrust bearings, which can withstand only so much abuse before they bend or break. I'm not saying the bread trick will have a catastrophic effect on your engine, I'm just pointing this out so that you can use your own judgment. In his video, Matt is eventually successful, but you should watch it to see the third reason this could go wrong. By the way, if you like Jeeps and you haven't seen his channel, I highly recommend it. Matt has a unique style and some really cool build projects to check out. So click this link if you want to see his full video. It also strikes me as a little ironic that I'm about to show you how I use this tool in a way that is not intended by the manufacturer. It's probably why Google invented the comment section. Hang in there, that's coming up in just a minute. Moving on to the collet attachments. There are four of them ranging in size from 3 8 of an inch to one and a quarter inches, all of which have a male M14 coarse end, which explains the adapter on the slide handle, also an expanding end with this small flange. The way this works is you select a collet that fits to the inner race of the bearing. Insert it, then wrench the forcing screw into the tool. Once it expands completely, it will have a very positive grip on that bearing. 
Now just screw the slide hammer on and give her a couple of taps. The bearing should come out very easily. All right, I've been teasing it long enough. Up next, my favorite new way to remove bake on, stuck on steel valve covers. Like I said, this is my favorite method for breaking that bond which we've all struggled with, but it comes with a word of warning. This is not a procedure recommended by any service manual and could cause damage to engine components. I tried this after fighting a Mitsubishi valve cover with an old hard leaky gasket. Pry bars, screwdrivers, and hammers had no effect unless I persisted, in which case I risked doing damage to the cover or the aluminum head or an innocent fuel injector whose only crime would have been being in the path of my desperately swung dead blow hammer. I found that the largest collet in this kit just fits through the spark plug hole on a valve cover. Once I wiggle the collet through the hole, I make sure it's sitting on top of the tube seal and under the cover, so in between. Then I just snug it up by hand, double check the fit, and screw on the slide hammer. You'll see that I only had to hit this cover four or five times to get it to pop. And that's light taps. I'm not hitting it hard at all. That being said, I always check components after they've been removed to inspect for damage. So far, I've found none. Again, use your own judgment. Also know that I do not hammer on plastic or aluminum valve covers. I'm only comfortable using this method on steel valve covers, and I'm very careful to use minimal force. All right, it's time to see if I'd recommend buying this tool. First, I'm gonna rate it from one to 10 in three different categories. Then I'll total those up and find out where on the scale this tool belongs. Either buy, shop around, or walk away. First, in the form category, the tool seems reasonably well made. The collets are sturdy and all of the threads are smooth. I also like the case which is held up well. My only gripe here is the slide hammer shape and knurling isn't very ergonomic, but it gets an 8 out of 10. Next, in the function category, so far everything I've thrown at this tool has been no match for it and I've been very happy with the results. The only drawback here is its range. There are a few skip sizes between its minimum and maximum openings and bigger collets would be a nice to have, so it gets an eight out of 10. Finally, value. Harper Freight only gives you a 90 day warranty with this tool, which is a bummer but a list price under $75 puts this tool at the low end of the scale compared to its competitors, which can be two or three times more expensive. And let's not forget about the famous 20% off coupons available for download right from Harbor Freight's website. Because of that, this set earns a very good nine out of 10. Add up the scores and the Pittsburgh bearing puller gets a 25 out of 30 and has earned a tool demos buy recommendation. You can buy a kit with a larger selection of adapters, but if the Pittsburgh range fits your needs, I'd say you can't go wrong at this price point. I certainly do look forward to reading your comments on the video. Thanks for watching. Hmm, yeah, so, <laughs> I can't start my sentence with, hmm, yeah. <laughs> so add up all the scores and the Pittsburgh bearing puller set gets us, what does it get? 25 out of 30. <laughs>